Hi guys, James here from Tribe uh, with the first of a series of Q&As that we're going to do during this coronavirus downturn. Uh, today's topic is going to be on optimizing sleep. Um, so there's a series of tips that I'm going to give um, that will help you uh, get a better night's sleep. And um, you know, this type of uh, stressful situation that we're all going through right now can cause a lot of people to have insomnia who've never had it before. But if you're like me and have struggled ever since back in the uni days in the 90s, um, uh, it's, 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 it has been an ongoing problem and it's, a, lot, a lot of it has to do with uh, inability to turn off mental processing. All right? So uh, myself, I'm quite highly strung during the day and at night time, even though I can mellow out quite well, turning that mental processing off can be a challenge. So here's a series of tips to help you overcome that. Tip number one um, has to do with light and getting your circadian rhythms um, um, uh, aligned correctly. So firstly, between the hours of 6 and 8.30 in the morning, what you want to do is get at least 30 minutes of direct sunlight on you, all right? Um, sunlight contains blue light, right? And blue light, um, um, uh, once, uh, hit, once it hits the iris, uh, goes to the brain and tells the brain to upregulate excitatory hormones. In effect, it tells the brain that it's daytime. All right, so of course that's not something you want in your nighttime environment. So uh, when you get home, when the sun gets down, it's very important that you remove to the extent you can blue light from your environment entirely. And that includes not just the ambient lighting that you'll find like this room, for instance, uh, normal white light contains blue light. So if this is the type of lighting you have at home, it's gonna be very hard when you turn that off to instantly fall asleep. Also in devices. Devices have blue light blocking filters that you can use. Um, there's also blue, blue light blocking glasses, blue blockers they're called. Um, uh, and, but if you want to go the whole way, you can do what I've done, and that is change all the bulbs in your house to what's called a Philips Hue bulb, H-U-E. Um, this bulb contains all the colors of the spectrum, and uh, with an app, what you can do is you can program it to um, nighttime mode. Um, that's every, house, every, every room in the house. So what we do is um, at sunset, all the lights in our house change from a uh, normal blue light down to a burgundy colored light or a uh, burnt orange sort of color. So it creates a nice warm environment, but what it also does is um, takes the blue light out of the spectrum. So once that happens, once the eye detects light but not blue light, melatonin is upregulated and that's a sleep hormone. So it allows you to kind of slip into that modality where you're going to um, fall asleep with much greater ease. Okay, no, tip number two, uh, thermoregulation, temperature. Okay, so... Um, a lot of people find it really hard to fall asleep in the summertime because they're just overheated. And I think most people like to be kind of toasty when they get into bed, and that's understandable. But you might be surprised to learn that optimal temperatures um, 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 for you to fall asleep uh, range between 15 and 20 degrees Celsius. That's, that's pretty cold. I mean, 15 degrees is pretty cool. If you've got 17 degrees, which is what I like, you definitely need something over the top of you, right? So um, there's numerous ways to do this, of course. If you don't like sleeping with air conditioner, what you can do is get a, um, uh, a new technology called a chili pad, right? So this chili pad, um, you can get it from chilitechnology.com. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. You can imagine a, uh, say, imagine an electric blanket, but instead of um, uh, the wires that are contained within the blanket, you have a thin film of water. Now, this water can be uh, changed with a uh, processing unit at the base of the bed to any temperature that you want. So you can zero it right into 15 degrees, 16, 17 degrees, um, or you can warm it up during the, during the winter months. Um, also, if you're next to your partner and your partner wants a different temperature to you, and of course this is more common than not, um, they, uh, chili pads come in uh, double bed sizes, each side with its own processing unit. Yeah, so as far as temperature is concerned, just make sure if you don't want to use the air conditioner and you're not near an open window, um, chili, the chili pad is something really to look at. It's, it's, look, it's reasonably expensive. It's around about, you're not going to get much change out of probably 1200, I'd say. But um, it's been a, definitely a game changer for me. No matter what the temperature of the night, I know that I'm, I've got the exact temperature that I want when I get into bed. Uh, and again, that's chilitechnology.com. Um, tip number three, timing. Okay, so the ideal time to be asleep. In other words, the time when humans get the most beneficial hormonal secretions and recovery um, is between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m., all right? So if you can possibly be asleep by 10 p.m., that sleep that you'll get there is of much more beneficence to you than it would be from, say, four hours from two to six. Yeah, so eight hours sleep from 10 to six is, is um, uh, much better than, say, midnight to 8 a.m. on that basis, right? So, um, 
it's really important that uh, you get to sleep if you can between those times because the rest that you will get will be um, uh, much deeper and, and more, as I say, more beneficial. Now, the one thing that um, um, has bothered me whenever I've had um, insomnia over the years is that I might wake up at about two o'clock in the morning and think, oh, I've got to get up at four or five. I've only got a couple of hours to go. And that can kind of play on my mind. And when that does, I can kind of get into this mental gymnastics where I start doing the math, oh, 45 minutes to go, an hour to go. And all of a sudden, that's just going to raise my heart rate just enough so it guarantees no sleep. But what I like about getting to bed early like this is that I know that if I'm asleep between 10 and 2, even if I get no more sleep after that, the most beneficial part of the evening is done. And that knowledge calms me down. And of course, when you calm down, you fall straight to sleep anyway. All right. So a lot of what we're going to talk about later on is not just tips, but the overriding principle that you just have to calm down and not worry about sleeping. Worrying about not sleeping is every bit as bad uh, and it's every bit as big a cause for insomnia than, than anything else. All right, so, so I think the thing is that um, if you're going to have a night without sleep, don't worry too much, you're not gonna die. You'll be a bit weary the next day, but you'll be all right. And chances are you have a really good sleep the next night. So this is not a tip that I'm saying don't worry, but, but that's the overriding principle through all of this. All right, so tip number three is timing. Tip number four is um, magnesium. Okay, so uh, a central symptom of magnesium deficiency um, is insomnia, all right? So, so uh, insomnia is good for many, many things, right? Um, uh, it's, a, it's a really nice relaxant. It balances your blood sugar, optimizes blood pressure, relaxes your muscles, et cetera, et cetera. It does a lot of stuff, right? So, so um, one of the few supplements I would take would be magnesium on this basis, but uh, yeah, as, a, as a, um, something to take just before bed, it's certainly very good. Now, there are many different magnesiums to take. The ones you want to focus on are the, what's called chelated magnesiums, all right? So they're the ones that generally end in A-T-E. Yeah, so um, chelated just means easily absorbed, all right? So, so magnesium citrate is the one I use. It's, it's arguably the best one. Um, also, if you're looking at um, um, absorption into the bloodstream, you can you can um, take a uh, say Epsom salt bath, a magnesium salt bath, right? So straight through the epidermis, straight into the bloodstream, um, and that's a great way to do it as well. It's also very relaxing, and it can relax your core temperature too. Yeah, so you get multiple benefits all in the same thing there. Okay, so magnesium tip number four, tip number five, air quality, right? So oftentimes. Rooms can be very stuffy, and especially if you're not in near an area that has a um, um, an open window, uh, what you'll find is that um, you can have um, a stale air, and stale air is a is a, is a is a big impediment to getting a good night's sleep. So, what I could recommend there is some type of air purifier. Um, what you'll also find is that. Uh, you know, um, um, air conditioners as well. Uh, they can benefit in some ways, but they, 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 can, they can hinder in others, right? So just be careful about the air conditioner. If you haven't got one, if you haven't got the, um, if you haven't got the open window, some type of air purifier is probably a good way to go. And you can get that at Harvey Norman or wherever you want to go. Now, here's another tip that really benefited me over the years, and that is a white noise maker, all right? So um, how this benefits is, what's an analogy? I, I could say that if I'm in this brightly lit room and someone puts a flashlight on, I'm barely going to see the flashlight. It's going to be covered over with the white light of the room. Now, thinking of that as an analogy for, for sound, um, something like a dog barking outside or someone uh, bouncing a tennis ball up and down, these short, sharp sounds um, will be um, covered over in the wash of white noise. So if you're living in an area where there's cars going past, beeping horns, whatever it happens to be, short, sharp sounds, these can be all um, um, overridden and... and um, uh, uh, squashed, if you like, uh, covered over by um, a nice white noisemaker. Now, there's many different ones that you can get. You can buy specific ones. There's one called a, uh, a Nightingale Smart Home Sleep System if you want to go all the way. And there's uh, different variations of white noise. But a cheap alternative is just to go to Bunnings and get a, a big fan, <laughs> right? So um, that's worked well for me over the years as well, like a big industrial fan. It's curious, isn't it, that... Um, you know, what we're trying to do is go to sleep, but the really loud white noise actually can have a very calmative effect, even though it's a loud noise. Kind of like a soft rain on a tin roof or something like that. It's loud, but it's calmative. Yeah, and it has that double effect of, of um, um, squashing out uh, sounds that you might not want to hear of a sharp nature. Okay, so that's uh, tip number six. All right, now, um, tip number seven is create a neuro association with your room and sleep. Now, if your bedroom has got, if you do work in there, if there's a workstation, if there's TVs, there's monitors, numerous activities get done in that room, 
your brain is not going to associate that room with sleep necessarily. It could associate it with all sorts of excitatory activities, right? So what you want to do is remove all the screens out of your room, get everything out of there, any workstation, anything you do in that room, just get it all out of there and associate it with one thing and one thing only, and that's sleep. Maybe something else as well, but yeah, you get what I'm saying. Associate the room with the activity that you want to. This neuro association can really help you sleep well. I know that as soon as I removed my uh, uh, little mini workstation from my from my bedroom, it really helped me a lot. Yeah. So um, as soon as you walk into the room, the body just knows. Okay, time to bed down now. Okay. Now um, here's another tip. Tip number eight: um, quality eye masks and earplugs as well. Right. So controlling the level of sound and the level of light can really help. So oftentimes in your bedroom, you might have alarm clocks or your phone with little blinking lights, and that ambient light can really have a deleterious effect on you getting to sleep. Even though you might not be able to see it very much, it's ideal to have a pitch black room, and the way to do that if you haven't got blackout curtains or, or something like that, or if there are little lights on in the room, is to get um, um, eye masks and, uh, and earplugs. Um, a place to go for that online is a place called sleepsolutions.com.au. So um, have a look at that place and they have all manner of different um, um, air purifiers and a lot of the products I've been talking about they sell. Uh, sleepsolutions.com.au. Okay, so um, tip nine and 10, um, I guess they fit under the same category, right? And that is that you want to understand that when you're falling asleep, right, you want to change, your brainwaves change as you slip into the first stage of sleep, right? So sitting here, sitting here now talking to you or um, in any type of, um, of daytime activity, what you'll find is that your brainwaves um, have a certain frequency range, right? And that's, that's what they call the, the, the BETA range, the better range, right? So when you fall asleep, you want to try and get your brainwaves from beta to alpha state, now, when you get into alpha state, you're slipping into sleep, right? So how can you train your brain to go from beta to alpha? There's numerous ways to do that. The classic way, tip number 10, is meditation. Tip number nine is a kind of like a way to train your brain during a waking state without meditation to get to from beta to alpha, all right? So in effect, to slow your brain waves down um, to the point where you're in a deep meditative trance almost, as opposed to a, a normal discussion mode like we're in now all right so um this um neurofeedback technology it's um, um it's like a it's a, a helmet that sits on your head with headphones and i know it's a bit high tech but, but bear with me um so it will set off a chime when it detects that your brain waves are the normal alpha state a uh, correction the normal beta state but when you go from beta to alpha right the chi a chime will go off on your e in your ears and so you'll begin to associate the different internal state that you have with the chime that you hear in your ears until eventually you don't need the headset you can just close your eyes and go from from beta to alpha so in effect what you're doing is you're teaching yourself to get into that mindset where you're just about to fall asleep it's a brilliant technology um it's one that i've used um, um, um for years don't need it anymore because it's taught me what it needed to teach me but um yeah it's certainly fantastic and of course meditation does the same thing right um, to, uh, to, to draw your mind back into a sense of, of, of oneness or nothingness is something that take, takes practice. Um, but that's essentially what um, uh, meditation is about at, at its core. And when you are meditating, I don't want you to think ever that, well, meditation is not for me because I can't turn my mind off. It's very difficult to do that, and it does take practice, and it takes patience. That's why they call it the practice of meditation. So if you're sitting down trying to clear your mind of extraneous thoughts, then you find it wandering, just notice that, then bring it back to the center. It'll wander again, then notice that, and bring it back to the center. And gradually, you'll get better and better at bringing it back to the center. In effect, what you're doing is you're changing your brain waves from beta to alpha, which is exactly what you want to do to fall asleep. So tip nine and 10 have to do with... Uh, um, initiating this this alpha brainwave state. All right, so uh, tip number eleven has to do with what we're consuming: uh, food and alcohol. All right, so if you eat a lot um, just before bed, it's not ideal to fall asleep that way. So try and get the last meal that you have into your system uh, at least a couple of hours before you go to bed. Right, so so your body processing all that food, it's um, uh, it makes falling, it just provide puts another hurdle between you and sleep, which you don't need. Now, alcohol is a really interesting one. Now. With alcohol, it's true that if you want to turn your mind off, what you can do is have a, a nightcap, right, as they call it. And what will happen is that your brain will calm down and it's kind of hard to think about anything um, when you're a little bit inebriated. That can help you slide into sleep. 
But unfortunately, what can happen is that halfway through the night, maybe one or two in the morning, what will happen is that you'll be woken up when your body finally burns through and processes all that alcohol. That can be a, a little bit of a release of adrenaline and that can wake you up. Then all of a sudden you're awake again and you can't get back to sleep. Not to mention the fact that, um, you know, when you wake up the next morning, you're not going to feel so hot. And... Um, um, uh, one of the dangers is that you can become so associated, or you can associate the idea of alcohol and falling to sleep so much so that that becomes a problem of its own. So you want to be really careful about that. Yeah, so it can, can seem like a, a magic bullet to get to sleep, but really it's going to cause far more problems down the track. Now, I mentioned this a little bit before. Um, tip number 12 is how to, um, to manage sleep performance anxiety. All right, this is a, this is the big one. So if you don't get this right, all the other tips I've mentioned are all meaningless. All right, so sleep performance anxiety is, of course, um, um, it's eight o'clock and already I'm thinking, oh man, I've, I've got to get to sleep tonight. I've got to get up early tomorrow. How am I going to do it? God, what if I have problems falling to sleep? If I have problems falling to sleep, I'm going to be so tired for that meeting tomorrow. Oh God, I'm creating the problem for myself. I'm talking myself into insomnia, right? So the very concern and worry about Falling asleep causes you not to sleep. It's uh, And then if that happens one or two days in a row, for some people, all of a sudden, it's an issue, right? Then they're looking at pharmaceuticals to help them and so forth. It, it, can, be a, it can be a bad scene and it can be self-perpetuating. And all of a sudden, you need uh, some sort of medical intervention if it goes for long enough. So the one thing is to just um, re realize that to get over sleep performance anxiety is that even if you sleep not a wink one night, you're not going to die the next day. You're going to be okay. And just the knowledge that you're going to be all right, albeit it may be a little weary, should calm you down enough to realize that your body will sleep when it needs to. And all you have to do is not focus on trying to fall to sleep, but just focus on calming down. Yeah? So, so um, it was once uh, described to me that trying to fall asleep is like trying to be spontaneous, right? You can't try to be that. You just have to be it, right? So don't try to fall asleep. Because your inability to do so will cause frustration. The frustration gets your heart rate up, then you're toast. All right, so next time you find yourself perhaps in that situation, just take a deep breath. It's going to be all right. Relax a little bit. Realize that the world's not going to end. You're not going to die if you don't get some sleep. Calm yourself down, and what do you know? You'll fall asleep. All right, so that sleep performance anxiety is a really big one. Uh, some of the studies that have been on this are very fascinating as well, one of which is um, uh, people that had the most success trying to fall to sleep, insomniacs that is, um, by trying to stay awake, right? So the very fact that they were trying to stay awake calmed them down, uh, calmed them down sufficiently to where they'd fall asleep. Uh, quite ironic, but, but, but nevertheless true. It's funny that the, the games we play with our minds, isn't it? And when it comes to falling asleep, it could be like a gymnastics display, right? It's, it's, uh, it's complicated and frustrating for many of us, but the solution's quite simple. Just calm down and stop worrying about it, right? So if you get that aspect right, all the other tips I've talked about, uh, you're going to find that you have a good night's sleep. And um, the most important thing is just don't worry about it, okay? All right, so send in your questions. We'll have a bit of a 15-minute, 20-minute discussion, uh, maybe once, twice a week throughout this corona um, episode. Uh, lots more fun stuff to talk about. So send in your, your Q&As and your likes. Thanks a lot. Next time. Bye.